Pokemon Sword and Shield will not feature all previous 800 plus Pokemon, and this news has proven controversial. The decision is not without precedent. The history of the Pokemon series is replete with instances of Game Freak deliberately leaving some pocket monsters out of their games. Restricting the Pokemon that can be caught goes back all the way to the birth of the series. As we covered in our very first video, the idea for Pokemon came when series creator Satoshi Tajiri saw two friends playing with a Game Boy Link cable, and he imagined players trading bugs across the wire. In order to encourage trading, two versions of the game, red and green, were initially released in Japan. Each of these games contained an incomplete experience, as not all Pokemon were available in each game. Players needed to work together in order to complete their entire Pokedex. There was a certain amount of disappointment when the sequel games, Gold and Silver, first released. Players realised that these new games didn't include any legitimate way to catch many popular first-generation Pokemon, including the starters Bulbasaur, Charmander, and Squirtle, as well as the legendary birds and several ancient fossil Pokemon. The games were designed around trading with the older Pokemon games – red, green, blue, and yellow. If a player of Pokemon Gold didn't have access to one of these games, there was no way to complete the Pokedex. Then, there came the biggest upset to the series at the time. While Gold, Silver, and Crystal were built around the expectation of players bringing previous Pokemon into a new game, Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire was built around the opposite idea. The first main series Game Boy Advance Pokemon games didn't feature backwards compatibility, meaning that players could no longer trade back and forth with their older games. Only 200 Pokemon were available in the game's standard Pokedex, not including event Pokemon, which meant that 185 previous Pokemon were left out of the game. This situation is slightly different from the ongoing Sword and Shield debate in that the missing Pokemon were actually coded into the game. They were simply entirely inaccessible. It wasn't until over a year later that Pokemon Fire Red and Leaf Green were released, finally allowing players to complete their Pokedex. Even so, catching Pokemon from the second generation of games was difficult without also trading across from the GameCube game Pokemon Colosseum. Speaking of the GameCube role-playing games, this era also saw the release of Pokemon XD, Gale of Darkness which features a plot thread that centres around the, at the time, brand new Pokemon, Bonsly. Bonsly appeared in the game, but could not be captured, and wouldn't be available for players to use until the release of Pokemon Diamond and Pearl. Much like Gold and Silver, Diamond and Pearl featured the option to let players import their Pokemon from older games. Yet again, these games didn't allow players to obtain previous generation starters and legendary Pokemon, without importing them from GBA titles. Then, there came Pokemon Black and White. These games again featured backwards compatibility, but the decision was made that the main story itself would not feature any familiar Pokemon from previous games. Only after beating the Elite Four and completing the game's main campaign could players catch older Pokemon, or even import Pokemon from previous games. There was also another wrinkle. Pokemon who had learnt an HM, such as Cut or Fly, could not be brought into the game. This is significant because Pokemon Heart Gold and Soul Silver allowed players to catch flying or surfing Pikachu, and these could not be brought into black or white without stripping away their special powers. With the sixth generation of Pokemon titles, Game Freak seemed to loosen up a little bit. For the first time since the Game Boy Advance era, it was possible to catch every Pokemon in the Pokedex without needing to import some monsters from previous games. The seventh generation games again required trading or uploading for some Pokemon, but things were made a little easier with the eShop 3DS re-release of the Game Boy Pokemon games. These were compatible with the Pokemon Bank storage system, giving players an additional way to catch them all. Or catch most of them, at least. There have always been limitations placed on the Pokemon that can be caught in any given game. Sometimes these limitations are entirely arbitrary, designed solely to make collecting Pokemon more difficult, 
and, in some cases, tedious. If this history lesson has shown anything, it's that missing Pokémon are eventually restored as part of the release of subsequent games. No Pokémon is ever left out of the fun for long. Except, of course, for missing No, but that probably doesn't really count.